Hey gang, Pastor Steve here, and welcome to the next installment of our Psalm 119 devotional as we continue to study through Psalm 119. Today we're going to start in verse 81, and I think it's so fitting when we consider all that's going around us right now in our lives. It's the calf, and it starts with 81. It says, My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. Isn't that so true? My soul faints in your salvation, but I hope in your word. We, 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 we long, we desire, oh Lord, come, come quickly, Lord, come quickly. I want to just be with you. I just want to be with you. But until then, I hold on to your word. I hold on to you, but I hope in your word. I know that, that your word is true and is sure. Um, so it says, my soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your words. My eyes fail from searching your words, saying, when will, your when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servants? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your law, and your commandments are faithful. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. They almost made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precepts. Revive me according to your loving kindness, so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. What a beautiful section. As he it starts out saying, my soul faints for your salvation, I hope in your word. My eyes fail from searching for your word, saying, when will you comfort me? Sometimes that's how we feel. We're like, Lord, wh when are you going to comfort me? This Everything around me seems to be overwhelming me. I seem scared and frightened. I, I, I dread turning on the news to see what's new going on in the world. Um, and I'm scared. It says in verse 83, for I have become like a wineskin in smoke. A wineskin is a stretched skin and in smoke would be dried and sometimes that's how we feel we feel stretched out and dry and sometimes we go through those dry periods everyone does they go through those dry periods where we just feel like we're like we just feel so set apart we feel so separated we feel like god i'm not i'm not feeling your presence right now i feel like i'm going through the desert well hey you know what god did great things in the desert moses was wandering in the desert. Elijah wandering in the desert, running and hiding in the desert. God meets people in the desert. Jacob was running in the desert. So many throughout scripture running in the desert. And you know, all these times we go out to the desert, we go out to the desert and then the Lord speaks to us. And we go, yes, all right. The Lord's going to work. The Lord is going to move. All your commandments are faithful. And I love this. So that I may keep your testimonies of your mouth. Lord, help me hold on. Help me have hope and hold on. So we continue on in verse 89 here in the Lament. It says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. I have sent the con I've seen the cons consummation of all perfection, but your commandments but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. Forever, O word, your word is stands in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. It all generations. It stands. It's settled. His word does not change. It's not for the old days. It's not needs doesn't need to be revived. It stands and it is true and we can hold on to it. We have to remember that the psalmist who wrote this was writing about the first four books of the Old Testament, and really he was only writing about a small portion in Exodus, which speaks about the laws of God that were laid out, the Ten Commandments and the laws surrounding that. That's all he was speaking about, and those are the things that he knew he needed to hold on to and that they gave him life and direction, and that's so beautiful. They're settled in the heaven. You establish the earth and it abides. Again, the word abides means it stands firm. It stands firm. They continue this day according to your ordinance for all your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would have, would then have perished in my affliction. We need to hold on to the word of God. And I know you're probably going, okay, Pastor Steve, you keep saying it over and over again. I got a word. Hold on to the word of God. I got to get into the word of God. I got to let it seep in. Well, you know what? That's what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, hey, you guys have to understand this. You got to do this. 
It, it's what gives me life. This is what gets me through those difficult times. And you know what? He's being honest. He's saying, I've gone through affliction. I've been in dry times. I've been stretched out. I've been drawn out. I need help. Um, verse 94 says, I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked wait for me to destroy me. Sometimes that's how we feel, but I will consider your testimonies. When we feel like everything is coming against us, when we feel like everything is falling apart, we have to remember and look to the word of God and say, you know what, God, you're going to get me through this. I don't know how, I can't see it, but you are going to get me through this and you're going to take me through. We continue on in verse 97 in the mem, it says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. All the day, you, th uh, you through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. For they are even they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from e every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourselves have taught me how sweet are your words by uh, sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every evil, every sorry, I hate every false way. Again, another section that just blows me away: the importance of understanding the Word of God and how it makes us wiser. It says, "Oh, how I love your law! It is my meditation all the day." We need to be taking the word again, and I know we've already talked about this, but we need to continue to bring it in and meditate. And that means bringing it up over and over again in our lives. One of the tricks is, hey, grab some little cards or uh, maybe some uh, recipe cards. Write the word of God on them. Write a scripture that jumps out to you that you want to hide away in your heart and place them around your house and just pick them up every day. Read them a couple times a day. Keep going over them and letting the word of God seep in. And here is the awesome thing. It says in verse 98 here, um, you uh, through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. That's the thing. The Lord God will make you wiser than your enemies. And I, like uh, John Corson tells a neat story in one of his uh, uh, commentaries or application commentary. Or, um, and he says, you know, this... Um, uh, policeman who understood God's word uh, was chasing these bad guys and um, these robbers, thieves in Israel, and he was chasing them, and they were getting away on a cart with two donkeys, and the the bad guys jump off the cart and they let the donkeys go and they run off, and so the policeman he catches up to the donkeys and he's like, well they're gone, I, how am I going to catch them? So he goes home and he actually starves the donkeys. He, he basically doesn't feed them for three days, and then he releases them, knowing that in Isaiah 1 3 it says that the donkeys will go back to their home. And so they went back and he caught the bad guys. And you know, it's amazing how the Lord will use the Word of God. Uh, think of the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers got rich by looking at the Word of God and going, hey, you know what? It says that there's tar pits, it says there's oil here. I'm going to go to that land and I'm going to get the oil. And that's how they became rich. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we, the Word of God is an archaeological dig that we can dig out and get treasures. But you know what? We can get treasures. Treasures spiritually. Treasures in our lives that help us guide ourselves through the difficult things of our life. Uh, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. You know, sometimes people say, wow, you're really wise for your age. And you know why? The Word of God. It's not because I studied stuff or watched the news or spent so much time doing this or that. It's because the Word of God makes you wise. So you want to become wise? Get into the Word of God. Dig in. Get in deeper. All right, let's continue on. In uh, Oh, sorry. As we go through 104, it says... Uh, Verse 104, through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. As we dig into the Word, as we grow in the Word of God, it helps us and it makes us stronger, but it also makes us hate evil. We look at evil in the world and we go, oh man, this has got to stop. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Lord, break through in this situation. It doesn't make me mad, so I'm going to go out and uh, arm myself and be like, okay, I got my stuff now. I'm going to go get it. No, it makes me go, okay, Lord, I hate what I'm seeing around me and I want to see a change and therefore I want to reach the world around me with the love of God so that they will be changed and they will grow. All right, then the last one here, the nun, it says, uh, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Oh, beautiful. Or your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. 
I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the, fr the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me the judgments. My life is continually in my hands, yet I do not forget your laws. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. All right, another beautiful section here. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God will direct you. The word of God will take you where you need to go. It will direct you. Now, does it light our path all the way down for the next five years? No, it just lights the, the few steps in front of us and we take those steps and we trust the Lord. It is, I like it, it says, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It just lights my feet and lights the way that I need to go. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. Even though I'm uh, I am afflicted very much, revive me, O Lord. You know, there's nothing wrong with just getting up and saying, Lord, give me that strength today. I need it. Revive me. And the Lord just continues, verse 111 here, Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. That's what we need to hold on to, the heritage that we have in the Lord, that he has done great things, and he's going to continue what he has begun. In, I'm going to jump back here, 109, it says, My life is continually in my hands, yet I do not forget your law. You know, we when it's in our hands, that's a dangerous place. Our life, when it's in our hands, it's a dangerous place. That's why we need to give it over to the Lord. We're like, Lord, I need your word to guide me, not my hands. Because when I get into it, I hit a brick wall and I smash my nose. You know, I, it, it turns out to be a mess. You know, I encourage you guys, uh, get connected, get out, enjoy. The weather's beautiful. We had some snow uh, yesterday and stuff, but today, again, it's beautiful. Uh, the wind doesn't seem to be blowing this morning. So I encourage you, get out there, enjoy the beautiful weather. Make sure you keep your distance. Let's just make sure that this thing, um, uh, do the best that we can to love our neighbors and love those around us. But you know what? That doesn't mean that we can't get out and walk uh, 10 feet away from someone and yell at them as we walk. Hey, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. You know, and... Um, and if you're getting a little bored and squirrely and looking for something to do, I've got a whole whack of books from our, our book table and our bookshelf here uh, at the office. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're needing something to read, you can message me and um, I can leave it in my, if you don't want to talk, if you don't want to come, you, I can just leave it in my mailbox and come pick them up there. Um, you know, let's, you can take them for free. Uh, this one is Harvest. This one talks all about the Calvary Chapel movement uh, in the early days and how it was established through the Jesus people movement. And uh, it's a, just a really nice book of testimonies, speaking of testimonies in our life. Another one I think that will impact most of you, the guy, the elders have been reading it. It's Why Grace Changes Everything. Awesome book. This is a book that you get and and you read over and over again. And if you'd like a copy, trust me, this will change your life. It really opens your eyes to the grace of God and how it works in your life. So I encourage you, if you want a copy of that, just let me know. Just fire me a message and say, yeah, I'd like that. For the ladies, there's a wonderful book here called Pleasing God by Kay Smith. Um, this is a book, I'll just read the back real quick. It says, life is full of choices. In an, ever, uh, in, in, in an average day, a woman must wrestle with a number of questions. Am I using my time wisely? Should I do something more or something better? Is the activity I want to do right or is it wrong? These questions can complicate life, your life and leave you feeling overwhelmed. But what if you narrowed that long, long list of choices down to just one? What if all your decisions were governed by one simple question? Does this please God? This is a wonderful book, book that will encourage you ladies to get you all uh, excited about just serving the Lord and pleasing the Lord. And so I've got that book as well that you can grab. And I think I only have a couple copies of that. Um, and you know what? I just encourage you, if you're interested in any of those books, just uh, fire me a message. I'll put them in our mailbox. You can come pick them up. And I just want you guys to be blessed and uh, taken care of. We'll join together on Sunday via YouTube again. And uh, and the Lord is just going to work through that. We have a lot of people that have been joining you know, um, from different places. Last night, for instance, at Bible study, I know Ryan joined us, which was really nice from Penticton. It was awesome seeing those guys. Uh, miss them. And uh, I know that other people from around different areas joined us. So I just encourage you guys to be plugged into the Word of God, to be uh, 
communicating with one another and just enjoying our beautiful nature that we have. Take, take the opportunity. We're told not to go to work. We're told not to do stuff. So get out and enjoy the beautiful country we live in. All right. God bless you guys and have a great day.